What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp extension tutorial for you. So in today's video we're going to talk about how to use the extension JHS Power Bar and one of the tools contained inside of it to quickly create a string of lights along a curve inside of SketchUp. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so JHS Power Bar is an extension you can download from the Sketchication extension warehouse. Notice there have been a, there have been several different updated versions over the years, um, so you should pick the one that's closest to your year. I'm currently using the version 2019 inside of SketchUp 2020, and it seems to be working just fine, but um, depending on the version that you're running, you may pick a different one of these. Um, but you can download this and install this, and then, um, what we're going to do is we're going to use this extension or we're going to use this extension to create a number of different lights hanging off of a wire um, in this patio scene. And so model credit for the modern outdoor patio furniture model goes to Benito Dog. You can download this and follow along in the SketchUp 3D warehouse. And so what we're going to do is we're going to start by drawing a curve between this point and this point. So basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna tap the A key and use the arc tool in order to draw an arc. So I'm just going to hold the shift key and move my mouse until I inference to this corner point right here. And then we're just gonna draw a little bit of a curve down just like this. We don't want it to be too much. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna use the segments of the arc and we're gonna use one of the tools contained inside of JHS Power Bar to quickly place lights hanging off of that arc. We may look at another example too, um, but what we need to pay attention to is we need to pay attention to the number of segments in the arc, because as most of you know, um, curves inside of SketchUp aren't necessarily curved as much as they're a bunch of individual segments along here. So, and so we can adjust the number of segments in this arc to get more or less points. But what we're going to do is we're going to use the, we're going to use the tool C points at vertex um, inside of JHS power bar. And basically what that's going to do, and I'm just going to click on it with this edge selected is that's going to add a number of different control points at every one of the vertices, meaning every one of the segments contained inside of this arc. And then we're going to use another extension in order to replace those or to place a component at those points. So depending on the number of lights that you want, you could come in here and select this curve. Whoops. And let's say you wanted more lights, you could make this like 20 segments by adjusting it up in your entity info. And then if we were to use C points at vertex, notice how you get more points in here. I'm actually going to go back and I'm gonna leave this at 12 segments. I think that's about perfect. And so what we wanna do is we want to place C points at every one of the vertices on here and then use this tool in order to replace those with components. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna select this edge and click on this C points at vertex option right here. What that's gonna do is that's gonna put a number of different points um, along our arc. So notice how it starts at one end, ends at the other end, and you should have 12 C points total. And so what we wanna do for right now, it actually looks like I have 13 in here, um, which makes sense because we have 12 segments. So we have 13 C points in here right now. Well, what we need is we need a component that we're gonna place at these C points. So we're gonna go into the 3D warehouse. So we'll go to window, 3D warehouse, and we'll just do a search for hanging light bulb. We'll go ahead and we'll sort by popularity. And we'll just find a hanging light bulb that we like. So I think I'm gonna pick one of these right here, the black and gold Hudson set by Desiree, Desiree A. So we're gonna go ahead and bring this in and then we're gonna adjust these just a little bit. So the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna click on download and we're gonna say yes to load directly into our 3D model. What that's gonna do is that's gonna bring our bulb in and that's gonna allow us to place this. And so for right now, I'm just gonna place this off in the distance and then we'll just move it so it's aligned right here. And what I wanna do is make a couple quick changes. Um, I wanna modify these just a little bit. And so what I wanna do is I wanna erase out all but one of these. So I'm gonna double click into this and erase all of these out. And then what I wanna do is I just wanna quickly adjust this model so that this top part is no longer in here, right? So I'm just gonna delete this out. So now what I have, and we'll go ahead and delete out the glass that's in here as well. 
So now what we have is just a hanging bulb, right? It's just in here ready to go. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna place this bulb and I might scale it down just a bit because it's a little bit big for what we're doing here. We're gonna place this bulb at these C points. And so the way that we're gonna do that is we're gonna use this tool, select C points and one component to place. So to do this, we just wanna come in here and we just wanna select all of the C points that we wanna replace. So I'm gonna select all of these and not the ones on the end because I don't wanna place a bulb right here or right here, that wouldn't make any sense. And so we also wanna hold the shift key and drag a selection box across our light in order to select this light, right? So now we have our C points selected and we have one component selected. Well, now we can come in here and we can select this option for select C points and one component to place. And so notice how these got placed kind of way off in the distance, right? Like they're not, they're not aligned with the C points right now. And so the reason for that is because if we double click into this model, you can see how the model origin, which is the area for the component itself inside of this uh, component, is way off to the side over here, right? So when we place these, what it did is it takes the model origin and that's what it's placing on these C points. And so all we need to do is just undo this and we'll just double click into this model right here. And we're just going to add the model axes instead of having them way over here, or the component axes, instead of having them way over here, we're gonna place them right in the middle because that's what we want hanging off of our C point, right? So we're just gonna come over here and select the option for axes. Over here in the left-hand side in my large tool set, you can also go to tools, axes in order to do this. And we're gonna set the model axes right in the middle of this face. So I'm just gonna click and then I'll make sure this is aligned the way that I want it. And I'll click a couple more times and then I'll click off of here. And what it's gonna ask me is if I want to update the component axes to match my modified sketch axes. And in this case, the answer is yes, because that's going to change the component axes to the point where I just drew. Well now, if I double click on this, you can see how the axes are right here. Well now that means that when I use this tool, so when I select these control points, and this component, and I run this, it's going to drop those with the component axes right on this point right here. And so then if we wanted to, if we wanted this to like go in a circle or if we wanted to have multiple instances of this going in a circle, all we would have to do is just select these, right click and make them a component. And we could just call this light string and then we can just tap the Q key and we can use the rotate tool to rotate these and create a radial copy. So um, I've set my central point, I'm gonna click, and then I'm gonna tap the control key in order to create a copy, right? So instead of this moving this, because I hit the control key, I'm in copy mode. Well, now I can click right here in order to place a copy at 60 degrees. And then I'm gonna type in times or star five and hit the enter key. What that's gonna do is that's gonna create five copies of this original object, each at 60 degrees um, along this radius. So you can see how you can easily use this to quickly add in these lights, just like this. And so this would work for other applications as well. So let's say for example, and I'm just gonna click in here and copy my edge. We'll just paste it over here somewhere. So let's say that we didn't want to do this in a circle. Let's say we wanted to do this in a lattice. So if I was to use the move tool to create a few copies of this, so let's say I was to do a times five and hit the enter key, or let's not make it a lattice. Let's just make it, we'll make another copy right here. You can see how what we can do is we could make like a number of lights hanging here and then we could just do the same thing or we could select this whole thing add control points at vertices. And then what I would do is I would do a top down view and I would select all of the control points. Whoops. There we go. That I wanted lights to be hanging on like this. Then we could just do the same thing. So we could select this light. We could use this to quickly place lights at the vertices in here. So once you have an understanding of the way the geometry is created, you can add these control points in here and you can 
create things like these hanging lights and other things as well really easily. So that's where I'm gonna end this video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Can you think of some cool applications for this? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.